Hi and welcome to the section of the Calculus 3 Tutor and in this section we're going to continue triple integration but this time it's going to be in spherical coordinates. So first we did triple integration, regular old triple integration in rectangular. Last section we did triple integration in cylindrical. Now I'm telling you we're going to do it in spherical coordinates. I think you can probably guess based on the name of it that instead of being kind of a cylindrical type of system, it's going to be a sort of a spherical rounded type of coordinate system that we're going to use. And obviously those kinds of integrals are going to be useful when you're doing any kinds of problems in real life that have spherical symmetry to them. And there's actually quite a few problems that actually have spherical symmetry and that's why it's useful. So let's just go ahead and jump into it by doing a little bit of review. Uh, remember from before, okay, just from before, that for rectangular coordinates you represent the point by x, y, and z. You've been learning this forever, okay? And then in the last section we ta talked about cylindrical, okay, cylindrical, and that one we use r, comma, theta, comma, z. Three numbers again because it's three-dimensional space, okay? What we're going to find is that in the spherical system, we're still going to need three numbers to represent the point, and so it's going to have three sort of directions. But instead of r, theta, and z, we're going to find out what they're going to be right here. So before I even get to that point, let me go ahead and just uh, let's draw a picture because I think that's going to be helpful. So let's go ahead and draw our coordinate system like this. This is x, uh, this is y, and this is z. Okay, and if the point p let me just go ahead and draw it like this. If the point P up here is what I'm actually interested in, okay, we know that you can represent it as X, Y, and Z in rectangular, okay, uh, and we know that in cylindrical you can also represent it as R, theta, and Z. So this is rectangular and cylindrical. What we're trying to do is define the spherical coordinate system here, okay. So let's do that, and let's say that instead of X, Y, and Z, Let's define a radius vector, but we're actually not going to label it r because we've already been using r before. So this is going to be a straight line distance, a straight line distance from the origin up to the point. Instead of r, we're going to call it rho. That's the uh, little letter rho. You might want to practice writing that on your paper. You kind of start in and then kind of come back on it and kind of draw a little tail. So just like this like this. That's how you kind of draw a row. That's row, okay? The reason we don't use R is it really is exactly the same idea as R uh, from before. The reason we don't use R is because we don't want to confuse ourselves with our cylindrical and our polar coordinates. So we call it row. It's literally the distance between the origin and the point, okay? Now that's one coordinate. Now in order to define this thing we have to continue you know, writing some coordinates. So this line, okay, if this points anywhere in space, is going to have an angle uh, and this angle is going to be uh, phi from the z-axis. That's going to be another one of the coordinates. And then finally, if you kind of can imagine dropping this down and, and then having the corresponding, uh, here, let's do it like this. Make it a little bit, a little bit cleaner. Okay, drawing it like this. Uh, then this guy is going to, this, this row is going to make a projection into the xy plane. Okay, and the angle that this makes with the x-axis is going to be theta. Okay, it's going to be theta. Now I'm also going to write one more thing here. This this line right here is exactly the same r as before. It's not actually part of the coordinate system, the spherical coordinate system, but I'm just kind of drawing it there for reference for you. So the three points that you need for spherical coordinates, okay, is rho theta and phi. Okay, So instead of three distances, you have one distance and two angles. So basically you still have three numbers. You still have three numbers. It's just that, uh, let's just pretend this is sort of three-dimensional space. This is the point I'm interested in and I'm the origin right here. First thing I have to do is say how far am I from the origin? I'm this, this far away. That's, all. That's rho. And then I define the angle from this line that I've just done, the angle up to the z-axis, that's phi. And then projecting down in the xy plane, the angle to the x-axis is what we call theta. It's the same theta that you've always been talking about before. So it's very similar to a cylindrical system, but not quite. This row is, uh, is from the origin up to the point. 
this angle phi is just the axis there and then this other angle is the projection of that guy to the x-axis. Those three numbers, I want you to think about that enough, but I think you can convince yourself that these three numbers will uniquely define any point. If I want to point down here, I'll have a, a different row, a different phi, and a different angle. And if I start changing any one of these angles here, or changing the length row, I can put the point anywhere I want in space, okay? So there's a couple of things I want to write down that are kind of important underneath. You all know from the distance formula, because this is just the distance from the origin to the point, that rho uh, is just going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So if I knew the x, y, and z coordinates of a point, I could always find what rho is just by using the distance formula. Okay. Now one thing I want you to note, I'm, I'm kind of building up to something that's actually kind of important here at the bottom of the page. One thing I want you to